Cryptocurrency in general represents the way of the future. Digital currencies free from government and corporate manipulation that will allow for the people to simply and easily work with each other in peace and harmony are, I think, on the rise. Or that's how it used to be anyway. Turns out in the real world there are bad actors. And bad actors always mess it up for the rest of us that just want to do the right thing. And unfortunately this is something that I've been predicting for a long time. And by the time you're watching this video, you'll know how the colonial pipeline attack and other headwinds may cause the price of Bitcoin to fall to levels that hasn't been in in almost a decade. But you'll also know why you shouldn't panic and why cryptocurrency is here to stay. So lovingly, tenderly, gently, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get started. You're watching Finance Squared, and I'm your host, Derek West. And on Finance Squared, we love talking about all things personal finance. And the causes of price fluctuations of Bitcoin certainly counts in that range of topics. Am I right? Certainly, I am right. And if those topics interest you, be sure to subscribe to this channel with post notifications turned on so you don't miss a video when they drop. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, the price of Bitcoin has been a little bit volatile lately. From highs up to $64,000 per token to falling to a little bit under half that earlier this late spring 2021. Yeah. Bitcoin has been on a roller coaster ride. Well, as I'm sure you know, there are reasons for that. Two big reasons, as a matter of fact. Number one, a lot of people fear it's overpriced and are worried about its fundamentals. And number two, reality is starting to sink in about how the US and China and other economies are going to start treating the token and other cryptocurrencies. Let's take a look at each of those big reasons and break them down. You see, people fear that Bitcoin is overpriced. Bitcoin has increased in price by over 900% since 2018. That increase in value is so swift and so grand that it dwarfs other so-called bubbles of the past. And people aware of these bubbles are concerned that the rise in Bitcoin is just representing that it has become the mother of all bubbles. This would include gold's rally in the 1970s, the Nikkei 225's surge in the 1980s, and the Nasdaq 100's explosion in the 1990s. Each of those were record-setting bubbles, and Bitcoin is surpassing that. If you invested in Bitcoin at any point before 2018, your investment has likely made you a lot of money, even with this current fall, even with this current drop in prices. If you went all in and invested quite a sum in cryptocurrency, you're probably a pretty wealthy individual right now, despite the recent pullback. But that said, you're also probably pretty worried. You more than likely fear that your fellow Bitcoin devotee is just as nervous as you are, and maybe even more so. You're more than likely a little paranoid that everyone else is going to sell all their holdings before you get a chance to get out, leaving you holding the Bitcoin bag that's now all of a sudden Worthless. After all, each of those bubbles that I spoke about earlier, they all ended ignominiously. Well, mostly. That is to say that they didn't end well in the near term. I think there is something that we can learn from each of those bubbles that we can apply to Bitcoin. The mother of all bubbles in the near future. So in the 1970s, gold rose very quickly in response to a lot of inflationary pressures that were happening on the US dollar at the time. But closely after that, gold fell back down to earth and got to a reasonable price level in the 1980s, following rate hikes that helped to stabilize the US dollar and get the US out of the inflationary doldrums that you know, it was stuck in at the time. And gold sort of stayed at a relatively similar level all the way into the late 2000s, when people again started to fear inflation after the bailouts of the 2008-2009 financial crisis. Even then, it hasn't really seen the craze that it had in the 70s during the worst of inflationary pressures in the US. The Nikkei 225 is really a cautionary tale of investing in stocks and index funds overall. Not all stock markets rise and rise and rise over time. The Nikkei 225 index measures the performance of the 225 largest publicly owned companies in Japan from a wide array of industry sectors. It's almost equivalent to the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the United States, but it's not quite as old. Starting in the late 70s, the Nikkei index seemed like it just wouldn't stop. It kept growing and growing and growing until it reached a peak of 38,957. This represented a six-fold increase in value over the decade of the 1980s. However, for the next 20 years following that, it lost nearly all of those gains, closing at 7,000 roughly on the 10th of March, 2009. So effectively, it went on a 20-year bear market. The store is not all bad though. Over the last 10 years, it has rebounded to a large degree and recently crossed the 30,000 point benchmark level in February, 2021. A similar story happened in the NASDAQ 100 index from the 1990s. 
established on January 31st, 1985, NASDAQ 100 was created to track companies in the NASDAQ exchange that were focused on industrial, technology, retail, telecommunications, biotechnology, healthcare, transportation, and media sectors. The companies that tended to be traded in that particular index all had some relationship to dot-com stocks that dominated the financial landscape at the time. Now we all know what happens next, and the dot-com bubble burst, and most companies that were involved in it went completely belly up. The index fell by roughly 78%, wiping out any gains any investors had in it at the time. However, since then, the index has rebounded and is almost close to its pre-dot-com burst highs. Are you starting to notice a trend in each of these bubbles? Asset classes experience a brief euphoria and price run up. It's at this time that the asset pops. Maybe it's a fast crash like gold to the dot com burst, or maybe it's a slow ride down like the Nikkei index, but the asset class price pops. And it's usually due to some new reality that people eventually realize. In the case of gold, interest rates were adjusted higher by the Fed, giving people higher confidence in the US dollar, giving the dollar more value. Thus, people didn't necessarily want to hold on to gold too much longer, as holding on to gold can be an expensive proposition in and of itself. In the case of the Nikkei index, when the Japanese asset price bubble burst, the Nikkei fell right along with it, slowly but surely. The Nasdaq 100 was a casualty of the dot-com craze, as many dot-com companies were listed in the Nasdaq. When people realized that a lot of the companies in the Nasdaq 100 had no clear path to making money, their prices felt like crazy. You see, new economic realities can strike and change people's perception of the asset in question, and also change people's appetites for the risks that those assets represent. Cryptocurrencies are beginning to enter that phase. New economic realities are beginning to show on the horizon. Cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin in particular, are starting to face those headwinds. Let me explain. There are three different headwinds in my estimation that I think cryptocurrencies will face in the near future. Each of them could cause the price of various cryptocurrencies to fall and others to rise. One is regulatory realities. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are in direct competition with the US dollar and other currencies across the globe. Their new position in the financial market mainstream is going to cause them to undergo strict regulations by the powers that be. Because cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, can be used for anonymous payments, there's going to be suspicious among said powers that they're being utilized for shady financial practices like tax avoidance, money laundering, financing of terrorism and terrorism activities. And this takes us to recent events such as the Colonial Pipeline terrorist incursion. For those of you that have been under a rock for the last hundred days, and no, not the country in the Middle East, but a stone. That's a terrible joke. I promise I'll stop telling you one of these days. In any case, here's a little bit of background for you. You see, the Colonial Pipeline originates down in Houston and services much of the southeastern United States. Early in May, a shadowy group known as Darkside gained access to the Colonial Pipeline network, which was reportedly a single password. And the single password get access to the entire VPN, which is a great reminder for all of us to change our passwords regularly. But with the assistance of the FBI, Colonial Pipeline paid the requested ransom of 75 Bitcoin which at the time translated to $4.4 million to the shadowy group. And once the shadowy group received the Bitcoin, it sent some software to Colonial Pipeline that allowed it to restore their network slowly but shortly. But the consequences of the disruption to the supply of fuel in the United States resulted in several days of panic. Folks were buying gasoline in gas lines and the fuel prices spiked similar to the 1970s. The whole incident is raising several questions, particularly about the security of needed infrastructure in the United States, as well as with Bitcoin and its role in funding of terrorist type activities. The blockchain analytics firm Elliptic published a Bitcoin wallet report showing $90 million in Bitcoin ransom payments were made to DarkSide or dark side affiliated groups over the last year, each originating from 47 distinct wallets. According to something called Dark Tracer, I'm assuming from the context of the article which I read this from, that they are victim groups of some sort. It's not clearly stated, but the 99 organizations have been infected. But 99 organizations have been infected with dark side malware, and up to 47% have paid the ransom. Now the FBI did retrieve about 63.7 of the bitcoins that it had paid for the cyber attack. Although the value of the bitcoin had dropped quite a bit since the initial attack took place, leaving the dollar value at about 2.3 million. Nevertheless, though, the talk about the use of bitcoin in cyber attacks is starting to grow in certain circles. Other events such as China. China cracking down on money laundering and also reining in and regulating Bitcoin mining farms has also caused people to speculate that the hammer is going to come down in the US and other regions across the globe in terms of regulation on cryptocurrencies in general and Bitcoin in specific. But Bitcoin not only faces regulatory scrutiny, it also has performance issues. Bitcoin, as one of the first cryptocurrencies to be developed, is also a cryptocurrency with the most antiquated software backing it. The truth is, is that it's one of the slowest of all cryptocurrencies out there, both in terms of latency and in terms of throughput. Latency being the speed to execute one transaction. And throughput being the amount of transactions that can occur during a certain period of time, usually one second. Your latency can influence your throughput, and the slower it is, the fewer transactions can actually occur. Now, there are various software tools that people use to help ease the slowness, but nevertheless, it's still an issue. Which leads us to the competition problem with Bitcoin. There are a ton of cryptocurrencies out there, almost all of which are superior to Bitcoin in almost every way. You know, except how expensive they are. At some point in the future, people will realize that they can utilize these new tokens, some of whom are more regulatory friendly, to do what Bitcoin 
Bitcoin and other tokens were designed for, transferring value in between people and businesses, and not just holding them, hoping that they would increase in value someday in comparison to dollars. Increase the value you get every week with the knowledge you gain from watching videos from Finance Squared. Do that by subscribing to this channel, while at the same time turning on post notifications so that you get these videos when they drop on the dot. Also comment down below with your thoughts on the headwinds that Bitcoin is facing. Do you think it will drop below 20,000? Why or why not? Is that a buying opportunity? Remember, the bubbles have burst before, only to come roaring back in the future. We're all dying to know what your thoughts are on the subject. So yeah, Bitcoin will be facing some serious scrutiny in the coming years. That's probably a good thing. It will help Bitcoin to become a better currency for all of us. And maybe not just to be a store of value that people hope, that people hope just increases in value. To me, Bitcoin is more useful and valuable to society when it's being utilized as an actual currency. That is something that people and businesses use to trade between each other to help to encourage economic activity. And any regulatory headwinds that face Bitcoin will only make the currency stronger. So there is no reason to panic, but instead to rejoice, just hang on for the ride. And remember, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks everybody for watching the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy, peace.